In this video, I'm gonna show you how to decorate this adorable Gracie's Corner Cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you wanna learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. If you wanna skip the intro and get right into the video, there are chapters linked below. So this week we are working on a Gracie's Corner Cake and how adorable is this cartoon? I think it's on YouTube or whatnot, but I just love it. I looked at a video recently and it's so adorable. But anyway, I am going to show you how to decorate this cake. Now I'm starting with my cakes already baked, filled, iced, and they are in the refrigerator waiting to be decorated. I have videos showing you how I bake, fill, ice, refrigerate cakes. All of that is going to be linked in the description. And I'm going to link below any of the tools I use and any other videos that I reference. So let's get started. I have Tylos Gum Tex Powder, CMC Powder, it's the same thing. It's mixed into all my fondant to help it set a little harder. I'm getting down some cornstarch, don't use powdered sugar. Powdered sugar will make everything sticky. Now I'm rolling this out pretty thin. I want to make the stripes for the bottom tier. Use my fondant smoother to smooth it out. Now you can see how thin it is. And I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna roll out every color of the rainbow. And I have this textured roller. I don't know if they still make this. I can see if I can find it and link it below, but you can use any textured roller that you'd like if you want some texture in your stripes. So I have this cake box lid and I'm using this ribbon cutter and anytime I cut anything out of fondant, I'm going to smooth my cuts with my fingers and I'm just cutting a bunch of stripes out in many different colors. And then I'm doing different thicknesses. So I'm making the thickness a little thinner, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And then cutting more stripes out in different colors. And let's set those aside. And I also straighten them with a ruler as well before I let them dry so they dry straight. Now we're making the polka dots. So I got another cake box lid and I have these circle cutters and some tips, some piping tips. And I'm cutting out a bunch of circles and I like to smooth the edges before I set them down. And I'm just cutting out a bunch of different colors in different sizes. And now I like to cut straight uh, through and they're not exactly in half but I like to cut the polka dots because I like to put straight edges at the top and the bottom and let's set those aside you'll see what I mean and now I got this out of the refrigerator I'm trying to find the front of the cake and mark that the icing is solid I'm not going to mess this up and I'm going to stack this cake so I have my ruler here and my bubble tea straws and I'm marking the marker just past the end of the ruler and then I'm going to cut that marker off and stick the straws in the bottom tier and make sure it's level. And then I'm going to get down some buttercream. And I have a video showing you how I stack cakes and I'm going to link that in the description. I'm gonna wash my hands. That cardboard circle is going to set atop of the straws so the cake won't collapse in on itself. Then I made sure it's level and I have this dowel and I'm cutting my dowel a little bit shorter than the height of the cake, countersinking the dowel down into the cake board and filling the little hole with some buttercream. Now I want to take a wet paper towel and just wipe off that cake board because there was some icing on there and I'm taking my X-Acto knife and cutting straight edges on the bottom of the stripes. So I'm starting in the back of the cake, I'm getting some piping gel behind each one of the stripes. And when you put them down, you wanna hold it perfectly vertical so it's not on an angle. I have these angled scissors, these offset scissors and make sure I'm cutting it flush with the top of the cake. And then I'm just going to put these stripes next to each other. And I decided to do it in a rainbow order. So doing light pink, dark pink, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, you know, you know the deal. <laughs> so I'm just making sure that I have them lined up next to each other. And that purple, I did a little line impression roller on that purple just to get a little more texture. So once I do all the colors, I'm gonna repeat the pattern to, until I get to the back of the cake. And I had to cut this a little thinner because that opening was not as wide as that stripe. So you just want to make it fit and press my fondant smoother against it, make sure everything is straight. And now I want to put the polka dots on the top tier. So you see how I have the straight edges down on the bottom. I just like doing that when I do polka dots. I think it looks so much better. And then I'm no rhyme or reason. I just like to have a variation of color. So you see how I'm trying to hold it up, make sure that it fits, and then I put it down. That blue one was a little too big, so I had to cut the straight edge. And I just like, I don't like to have the same color touching each other, right? So there's nice variation. Look how good that looks. I'm gonna put that back in the fridge. Now I printed these out. These are edible images. 
and I measured my cake and I printed them out the size I want to be. Now I have a video where I show you how I use edible images and I'm going to link that in the description for you. But what I like to do is I like to cut an even white border around all of the images. I just feel like it looks so much better when you do that. So I have the two girls here and then I also have another girl and a boy as well. And I'm just cutting that thin white border around all of them. And then I'm going to put them upside down on a paper towel. You see I have that white fondant rolled out really thin and some piping gel. And I'm wiping the piping gel all the way on the image, past the image onto the paper towel to make sure that I get piping gel everywhere so it sticks. And then I'm going to curl it so no air bubbles are going to get behind it and gently put it down on the fondant. And I'm going to do that for all of the pieces. And then I'm taking my X-Acto knife and just going along that white border that I made and just cutting these out. And once I cut anything out of fondant, I'm going to take my fingers and smooth my cuts. And I'm going to set them flat on a cutting board because I want them to dry flat. And that looks good. Let's set those aside. Now I have a piece of non-slip pad underneath my cutting board so it doesn't slide around, a wet paper towel with an X-Acto knife, a Dresden tool, and a little bit of water. We're going to make the name. So I measured the cake where I want it to be, and it's going to say Soule's Corner, and I hope I'm saying her name right. But we're going to do my trace cut and smooth method. So I am gently tracing these letters onto the fondant. You don't want to push too hard because you don't want to poke a hole in the fondant. And then I'm making it uh, the apostrophe S with the logo so that font is called grow bold but that i printed her name out and i feel like it's as close to the logos font as possible so i'm just making sure that i can trace all of the little details and the corner the word corner it looks like the letters are all together so i'm just keeping them all together and when you're tracing you want to make sure you get the inner pieces as well peel that back gently and there we go so now we're going to cut this out and anytime I cut anything out of fondant, I'm taking the time and using my fingers and my tools to smooth the cut so it doesn't look jagged. You want to make these look very pretty and nice and clean. And set those aside and I'm cutting out all the, all the letters. So I always say this, make sure you cut the center of the letters first before you cut the rest of it out. It's so much easier if you cut the small pieces out before you have the whole thing cut out. Just trust me. <laughs> And once I have that all cut out, I'm going to take my time again to smooth my cuts. And I just want to make sure that I don't mess up that word. And now I have some thin black fondant rolled out and that does have the Tyler's powder in it. All this fondant has Tyler's powder in it because it's helping it hold its shape. It's making it so much easier to cut. And I'm carefully putting that down using my tools to smooth it. And then before I glue down the letters, I am just putting them in place to make sure that they are even. And then I'm going to lift up each letter and get a little bit of water behind it. Make sure you don't get too much water behind it because you don't want the water seeping out underneath and getting onto the black fondant. And now I am getting really close. You can kind of see my glasses there. But I just want to cut an even black border around the entire name. So I'm just eyeballing it and making sure I'm cutting very carefully and just making sure the black border is the same width around the entire thing. And then again, taking my fingers and my tools and smoothing it out. And I want to set this on an 8 inch dummy because I'm putting it on an 8 inch cake and I just wanted to drive with the curve. Let's set that aside. Now I printed this number out the size I want it to be and I rolled out this white fondant really thin and I am tracing this number on there. I do have a PDF that has my favorite numbers on it and I will link that in the description for you. Now I'm getting water on that entire white piece and then I save those polka dots that I made earlier and I'm just lining these polka dots, no rhyme or reason with the color. I'm just kind of I'm lining them up right next to each other and then the row underneath it I'm staggering you see so they're not directly on top of each other now I'm putting this back on top and I'm using my needle tool to poke holes like I'm poking a dotted line that 
I can follow because I, I can't use a Dresden tool because I would drag the polka dots. You see how they get a little distorted? So you have to work like in little sections here. So I'm kind of doing a shallow cut right here. And then once I have that cut, I'm pulling, putting my the tip of my X-Acto knife all the way down to cut it out, smooth my cuts. And now I have some pink fondant rolled out Make a quarter of an inch thick, half inch thick, get some water behind that. And now this is thicker fondant. So again, I want to just stick the tip of my X-Acto knife in the fondant to create a line. I'm going to use that line as a guide to cut this out so I don't mess it up. So once I have that line made, I'm sticking the tip all the way down to the cutting board and cutting this out. And then I'm going to flip it over, smooth my cuts from the back, smooth my cuts from the front. Now I wet that skewer and this is why I rolled out that pink fondant a little thicker so I can screw a skewer in the bottom. And I just want to make sure it's not poking out the front and the back so I'm flipping it over and let's set that on a cutting board to dry. Now I have that brown fondant rolled out. You can see how thick it is. I have my ribbon cutter again and I'm making a little chocolate bar. So I want to make sure I line those lines right up next to each other. And I'm making these little squares. I'm not pushing it all the way down and I'm going to take my Dresden tool and deepen the center pieces. And then I'm taking my pizza cutter and cutting it out. Good. Smooth my cut. You got a little chocolate bar. Now, I'm an idiot. I totally forgot to film. So I'm showing you what I did. I used that line roller on the blue to make the uh, bottom part of the cupcake. And then I'm doing my trace cut and smooth. And I cut these pieces out. Use my... Dresden tool to make the impressions. You know, I'm so sorry. I forgot. I used that impression mat on the bottom of the cone and then again cut that out. I used the pink for the bottom color on the ice cream and then brown for the top color. So I just trace cut and smooth. I put that on top of the fondant, you know, and traced it out. I used the cutters to cut out the cherry and then I just hand cut the stem, making a little like triangle shape. I hope that made sense, but trace, cut, and smooth, that's the name of the game. So now we want to color in the cone, and I have some brown petal dust, and I'm just trying to bring out the detail in the lines. And a little bit on that cupcake part as well. Good, and let's set those aside. Now I'm making these little balls, so I'm making big balls and little balls. <laughs> um, just the big balls are going to be decorations, the little balls are going to go on wires, it will make sense as we go. So I'm just rolling uh, bigger ones and smaller ones in all of the colors and I'm just putting them on a cake box lid that's sprinkled with some cornstarch so they don't stick to it. Good, and let's set those aside. Now I got my cake out of the refrigerator. I have an icing bag with the tip number four, and I have my little name, and I'm getting some icing on the back and a little piping gel around the edges. That way the icing doesn't seep out the side. I'm finding the front of my cake, and sorry, it's a little blurry, and I'm centering that on the bottom tier. Now I'm getting toothpicks on either side of the skewer, so that way when I stick it in the cake, it does not twist. And I'm getting a little bit of icing underneath the number, and I'm holding the little girl down there just to see the correct placement, and putting that in the top of the cake, and then she's going to touch the number one right there, so I'm getting icing behind the back. So sorry, it's blurry. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on with my camera. Use a dry paintbrush to remove the excess icing, and then I'm holding these up to see where they look best. And I think that looks pretty good. Now these dried flat, so they're not gonna stick against the, the side of the cake. They're gonna stick out a little bit. So I'm just getting a little bit of icing behind them where they're going to touch the cake. And I'm just going to adjust them in the correct position. And now I don't know where I wanna put these on the cake, so I'm just holding the paper up <laughs> to see where I like it, and that looks pretty good. And I don't want the chocolate to be exactly against the cake. I like it sticking out a little bit, so I'm getting piping gel on the side that's going to stick to the cake and putting that down. And then getting the ice cream cone down onto the side of the cake as well. And now I want to get a fondant backing on this cupcake. So I'm getting a little bit of water behind all the pieces and then I'm going to cut it out. So this way it can stand on its own and it'll just be a lot more sturdy, if you will, with that fondant backing. So I can adhere this to the cake with some piping gel in one piece rather than piecing it together and it'll hold itself much better. 
And now I'm cutting straws a little bit shorter than the height of the cake and sticking these drinking straws into the cake to support the wires. And you see how I countersink them down, that way you can't see the straws. And that's where the wires are going to go. So I have this, I think it's 18 gauge wire. I'll link it in the description. I have my snips and I'm putting three wires in each straw. So I'm cutting 15 wires and I like to straighten it out a little bit because they have such a curve to them and it doesn't look right. And then I clean them with a wet paper towel. And then I do one to the front, one to the back, and one to the side in each of the straws. Again, one to the front, back, and one out. Good, and then I like to get these in a good position and take my snips and cut off the pieces that are a little bit too long. And I have a video where I go into detail on how I do this and I will link that in the description. I'm taking my icing and I'm filling the holes and then taking a dry paintbrush and just smoothing that out. I'm wiping the excess icing on a dry paper towel. And now I'm sticking the balls on here. So these little balls do have that Tylos powder mixed into them. So they dried hard and they're holding their shape as I put them on here. And now I'm cutting a toothpick in half and hammering it down into the board so these balls don't roll around. And I'm cutting the excess off because I don't want them to poke out the top. This will make sense. You see how I'm putting them on here? If the toothpicks were too tall, they would poke out the top. So I'm getting some piping gel underneath. This time I'm sticking that on the top of the tear. So I like to have toothpicks underneath it. That way they don't just roll around. And here's my big box of curlies. I have an addiction. <laughs> you guys know that I love these. I have a video showing you how I make these and I will link them in the description. However, I'm just getting a little bit of piping gel behind each of them and sticking them down to the cake. They just make it look so much more festive. Right, I can't stop using them, but I love the way they look. So now I'm getting some toxic, non-toxic glue, not toxic glue, <laughs> around the cake board and getting the ribbon on there and pressing it down one more time for good measure. And there is the cake. Look how beautiful that is. So there you go, how adorable is this cake? A few things that I wanted to say about this. This cake, the top tier is a three layer non torted six inch, and the bottom tier is a two layer torted eight inch, and it feeds about 35 to 45 people. I have a video where I talk about when to tort and when not to tort your cakes, and I will link that in the description for you. So I think that's it. What new techniques did you learn in this video? I would love to know. Leave them in the comments below. And just a reminder, I do have a membership program right now, and I'm so excited. You can become a member, bleh, you can become a member of my Cake Academy, and I will link that information for you in the description. There are three tiers to the Cake Academy. The base tier is a cake pop tier where you can support me and help me make more content for you and you can get some free and discounted extras extras being things like PDFs and recipe books that I release and then the top two tiers the cupcake tier and the dessert table tier both have access to a Facebook group where I'm going to be going live and we can share ideas and get pricing advice and also if you need constructive criticism on your cakes and any other questions you may have we are having so much fun in that Facebook group and I would love to have you aboard so I will link all that information below for you please like this video if you liked it and if you are enjoying my tutorials I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee my link is in the description and I'd love it if you keep in touch on socials and you can check out my website and if you want to stick around, you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.